Shaft fire and smoke hazards were contributing factors in several major disasters in metal and non-metal mines. The Mine Shaft Fire and Smoke Protection System program was initiated by the Department of Interior's Bureau of Mines in direct response to mine fire and fatality records and to the widespread use of wood in shaft construction of underground working mines and also to the increased hazards expected from greater use of electrical power, flammable liquids, diesel equipment, and greater mechanization. Under this program, the Bureau of Mines evaluated mine shaft fire and smoke hazard problems and developed and demonstrated a remotely operated mine shaft fire and smoke protection system that will guard against such hazards and be applicable to a majority of metal and non-metal mine shafts. In cooperation with the Mining Enforcement and Safety Administration and with the assistance of the mining industry, such a system has been designed and successfully tested. The design concept consists basically of four system elements. Sensors to detect the presence of a fire, ventilation barriers to remotely isolate and limit the spread of a fire and resultant toxic gases, controls to allow remote response to a fire regardless of location, and an extinguishing system to put out a fire or to control it until firefighting personnel can reach the scene. A key element of the fire protection system is the multiplexing of controls. This allows command of up to 30 or more areas by a single pair of wires. This greatly reduces the amount of wire required for controlling the system, minimizes cost, and simplifies installation. A second twisted pair from the fire zone to the surface provides a redundant path for dual control circuits for backup reliability. If one pair of wires is broken, an alternate route is used without degrading system performance. The surface control unit is the nerve center of the fire protection system. It reflects the pulse of the mine and instantly alerts the operator of trouble, even if fire breaks out in unattended sections of the mine. A test feature allows checking of the system at each level as desired by the operator. If primary power is interrupted, up to four hours of continuous operation is permitted by switching to internal battery power. Fail-safe features of the system also alert the operator to circuit malfunctions and loss of water pressure or electrical power. As fire is detected by a sensor, the operator notes its location on the corresponding panel, in this case, the 3,000-foot level. As other sensors respond, the operator visualizes the direction of fire propagation by noting the sequence in which the fire signals respond. The mine shaft fire and smoke protection system is controlled by a single master panel. In the prototype system, only one remote underground control unit was tested. The underground unit contains local controls, manual and electrical, to actuate two sprinkler systems, a manual pull box to alert the surface unit that a fire was observed, and a warning light that flashes whenever a local sensor detects the presence of a fire. A warning horn can be activated at the remote surface control unit by the panel operator. The horn at each underground unit warns miners in the area either to evacuate the mine or simply that a fire has been reported. Three types of sensors are used to detect a fire. An ionization detector developed for South African gold mines senses the presence of smoke and gives early warning of products of combustion resulting from fire. Because a primary killer in a mine fire is carbon monoxide, a second detector type warns of the presence of CO gas. The two types of sensors complement each other since both smoke and CO usually accompany any fire likely to be encountered in an underground mine. A third sensor selected for high reliability consists of thermal wire which melts at a temperature of about 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Although ionization and CO detectors may occasionally alarm because of diesel equipment or blasting, the melting of thermal wire sensors represents an almost foolproof indication that fire exists in a protected area. Ventilation systems designed to assure circulation of fresh air throughout the working places of a mine can also spread contaminated air with equal efficiency. The result can mean increased hazard to workers thousands of feet away from the site of a fire. 
By isolating a fire, spread of contaminated air is checked. Stopping the flow of fresh air to the fire may minimize its intensity and slow its growth. A manway in the remote operated ventilation barrier allows passage of personnel who must enter or leave the area. Warning of impending door movement is provided by a horn, which sounds for 10 seconds prior to door closure or opening. An integral air supply tank allows up to four operating cycles of the door, independent of mine air supply, and local controls permit miners at the scene to also open or close the door as required by the situation. The final element of the fire protection system consists of two separate remote-controlled sprinkler systems to protect distinct underground areas. One system provides coverage to lagging, plates, guides, and posts in 50 feet of the shaft area. The other protects the shaft station and about 150 feet of drift areas, which commonly contain high fire loading with more than one-tenth gallon per minute per square foot. The shaft sprinklers protect not only the interior of the shaft, which is often wet by cascading mine water, but also the dry exterior shaft areas on the side next to the rock walls. Rings of sprinkler pipes around the shaft, with cone pattern nozzles discharging on the exterior, and spray pattern nozzles protruding through the lagging, protecting the inside surfaces. Integration of the four system elements, sensors, ventilation barriers, sprinklers and control system into a comprehensive fire protection system was initially tested at a surface facility to evaluate system performance and component interfaces prior to actually going underground. This allowed refinement of the system to improve its capability. The system was then disassembled, shipped to the underground test site and reassembled underground. The surface control unit was placed in the hoist room 3,000 feet above the level at which the controlled test fire was to be built. A test fire was ignited first at the mine portal to familiarize safety and mine personnel with the type of fire to be built and to demonstrate the steel pan in which the underground fire was built and controlled. Wood cribs built to underwriter's lab specifications assured consistent fire conditions and test results. As a mine rescue team stood by to assist test personnel in the event of trouble, responsive sensors was evaluated and control of ventilation barriers, sprinklers, and all monitoring functions was conducted remotely from the surface control unit in the hoist room 3,000 feet up the shaft. Fire sensors at the site of the fire detected the presence of fire and smoke particles and carbon monoxide and signaled observers at the surface in the hoist room that a hazardous situation existed. In response to the signals, the fire site was isolated by remotely closing a ventilation barrier that prevented spread of the fire and its toxic byproducts beyond the immediate area. Once isolated, and after the fire burned for about eight minutes, the sprinkler system was turned on in the shaft station area and left running for six minutes. At the end of the period, the fire was completely extinguished. Tests with this system prove that remote fire control can be achieved for underground mine shafts and shaft stations. This technology is now available for use by the mining industry.